In this video, I will show you how to set up Facebook Conversions API using Google Tag Manager's server-side containers. To get started, you will need to have installed Google Tag Manager already on your website, and you will need to already have set up Google Tag Manager to track regular Facebook events. If you haven't already done that, that's a completely separate topic, and I can deal with that later. But for now, we're going to assume that you have a functional web container for Google Tag Manager that tracks all the important Facebook events that you want to be tracking. And we'll also then do the same for the server-side integration using Facebook Conversions API, also known as CAPI. So to get started, you leave your Google Tag Manager web container as it is. Don't touch that for now. You go into your account and create a whole new container. You can call that whatever you want to, make sure you save it as a server container click create gtm gives you the option to automatically provision a tagging server or to create a manually provisioned tagging server it is far easier to do this automatically the only thing is when you do this you will need to create a billing account if you don't already have one if you have one you can select an existing billing account and then you go ahead and do that click the next step once you've added in your billing details, follow the instructions and you will be set up with a whole new server container. It might take a minute or two, a full minute or two, you will have to actually wait. And then it'll provision something that looks exactly like your web container with one small change. That's the presence of something new called clients. We don't need to worry about the clients right now. What we do is go straight into tags and we're going to set up a new tag. We can call it Facebook happy. You will find this tag in the community template gallery. It's listed in there as Facebook conversions API tag. You add it to the workspace. You see the permissions and click add. And it does so. Now what you'll see is it asks you for three quick bits of information. You have to put your pixel ID. You have to add an API access token and you can add a test event code. If you go to your events manager for Facebook, in your settings, you'll see the pixel ID, and then you scroll down to the section which is called Conversions API. You click on this link to generate access token. I'm not gonna do that right now, but when you click on it, it'll take a second or two, and then it'll create a long access token. You put both those pieces of information in here, so you put the pixel ID here, you add the API access token in here. You can change your action source to be whatever you want it to be. In all probability, it's going to be website because you're working using Google Tag Manager for your web. Um, and then you can save that. If you want to test your setup, what you will also do is click test events in events manager, scroll down, and copy this test event code, pop that test event code in here, add a trigger. Triggers in Google Tag Manager server side don't work the exact same way as triggers for the web container. What we instead do is create a new trigger, call it all Facebook events. We will now trigger a custom event where we choose a built-in variable. In this case, we're going to say client name. And you can say it contains or equals GA4. Now, the reason we choose GA4 is because we're going to use Google Analytics 4 as our vehicle to pass information from the web container to the server container. You've got a web container where you're currently getting Facebook pixel events, you're going to also create Facebook server events, pass them from the web container to the server container using GA4 as your conduit of sorts. And then what you'll do is process these via GA4 in the server container and pass them on to Facebook. Um, you can also be fairly intelligent with this and you can select the sorts of events you want to pass through. So for example, 
If you set it this way, it might send you a whole lot of GA4 events, which you don't want to target. You can actually go into the system and tell it to only trigger on certain specific GA4 or Facebook specific events, such as purchase, add to cart, view content. And that's it. This is literally all the setup you need to do on the new server container. Most of the action actually happens in your web container. So when you're done, you have the Facebook Cappy conversions API tag implemented. You'll see there's a new trigger, which basically fires when your client equals to GA4. If you want, you can add in variables which determine which sorts of events go through and which ones don't, and that's it. The next most important thing that you need to do, and this is the bulk of what the actual work will be, is taking your existing Facebook events and preparing them so that they can also be sent to this server container that you've created to pass on information to Facebook's conversions API. The simplest way to do this is take your existing Facebook events, copy them and modify them to go through this new conversions API. There are a few things that you absolutely have to set up on your web container for Google Tag Manager. The first of those is called the configuration tag. Now I've already set this up so you can see what it looks like straight off. But for those of you who haven't already, you click new tag configuration. And out here you'll say Google Analytics GA4 configuration tag. You need to put a measurement ID. You can opt to send a page view event automatically, or you can send that separately. We're going to look at the one that I've done. As you can see, I've given it a fairly generic name. I've put a measurement ID. And what I've set in here in the fields is the most important part. Now, you absolutely have to set a transport URL. The transport URL is what determines whether this goes directly to GA4 or if this goes through to your server container. The way you find the transport URL is you go into your server container, you click this ID, and in there, when it's provisioned, you will actually see that there is a something 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 dot appspot dot com URL. That is the URL that you will put in here. You can either put it directly or you can save it as a variable called the transport URL. You might use it multiple times or you can just set it in the configuration tab once and forget about it. Another important thing you need to do is provide first party collection. You say that's true only if your GDPR and cookie policy declarations allow and let people know that you will be collecting first party data. Obviously, if you work in a sector that's um, very sensitive, such as the medical sector or financial services sector, be very sure that you have this permission before you start sharing things that your users haven't actually explicitly opted in for. Um, you can pick up an FBP and FBC, that's your Facebook profile ID and your Facebook click ID. Both of those are first party cookies. And the way you do it is you create a variable. And in that variable configuration, you'd say first party cookie. The FBC is underscore FBC. FBP is underscore FBP. And you simply save that. You add it in there. The last part is an event ID. You need to provide a unique event ID for each and every event. There's quite a few different ways you can do this, but it's very important that you do it because otherwise you'll be sending one event from your server, one event from the pixel for the exact same user and event. So if I make a purchase, I'm automatically triggering a web event via the pixel and a server event via conversions API. I want Facebook to count these as one event rather than two separate events, because otherwise it'll look like my campaigns are doing twice as well as they actually are. To enable deduplication, Facebook uses external IDs, it uses the FPP cookie, and it uses the event ID. So when two events with the same name come in at more or less the same time, 
and they have the same event ID. Facebook knows they refer to the same event. It then drops either the server or the pixel event, depending on the time and the freshness of that event being received by the system. And only one of them will then be taken. Now, if you're only doing pixel, obviously none of this comes into question. If you're only doing server-side tracking, then you don't need to worry about event IDs because there won't be event duplication. But where you have both of them happening, it is absolutely critical that you remember this step. Once you add all of this information in there, you then put in your trigger. In this case, we say all pages. We can do it on page views or you can do it on the DOM load, depending on how you're sending your event ID, how you want to measure this. You can even do it on window loaded if you want to make sure that the entire page is loaded before you fire a page view event. That's completely up to you. Setting up your config tag is the equivalent of putting your Facebook base code onto your website. After that, all you have to worry about is triggering specific event codes when people carry out certain conversion actions. A simple one would be something like the view content event, which happens when people visit a particular content page that's important to your conversion process. What you then do is you create a new tag for GA4. You set this to be a GA4 event rather than the config tag, and you link it to the GA4 config tag that we'd already created. You then provide an event name. This can be one of the standard event names like view content. And the important thing again here is the event ID. Now you'll be sending an event ID for page views and you'll be sending an event ID for view content. And you probably want to differentiate the two. You'd once again, put a trigger in there. And in this case, we've said it's the sign up page view. Once you've added in the trigger, you're pretty much good to go. The config tag has already got your transport URL. It's already got the FBP, FBC cookies, and it's got the permissions for first party data collection. What you want to add in here then is really specifics about the content, the view content. So if it's a product page, you might want to add in things like the content IDs. You might want to add in value, your currency, parameters. If you have user data that's available, you can add that in as well. That's completely up to you and what your users are sharing with you at that point. You'll need to set that up in the data layer in order to be able to pull it from your website into Google Tag Manager and then pass it on to the server side container. Setting up your Google Tag Manager server side to work with Facebook's conversions API really is that simple. The toughest part is making sure that your data layer has the right information in it. You're picking that up and sending that through in the correct format between your web container and your server container. This part can have all sorts of complexities. You might have to um, process the data using JavaScripts and so on. That's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but definitely get in touch and I'll be happy to help you if you have some particularly complicated implementations that you want to pass through from your product information or your checkout queues onto Google Tag Manager server and conversions API. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and let me know if you want to learn any more about Google Tag Manager server side or Facebook's conversions API setup. I'll be happy to create more videos.